So first, let's try to understand, guys, uh, how, what I mean. Different types of uh, learning. I mean, what types of learning techniques are available? So at a high level, are in general, we can actually classify all the different learning techniques into two different things. One is supervised learning, and the other one is the unsupervised learning technique, guys. So let's uh, see what is supervised learning and what is unsupervised learning. So though you know, uh, re re there is another sort of tech learning also, which is called as reinforcement learning that we'll look at later. What is reinforcement learning? But let's you know, for this session, let's stick ourselves to what is this two things. One is supervised learning. To define supervised learning in chart, so try training the system with examples is called as uh, supervised learning or else you know training the algorithm with a teacher also can be treated as the supervised learning guys so you first train the algorithm with all the sample data i mean with all the uh, labeled data which has both the predictors and the target variable and uh, you train the algorithm and then you you know use the unseen examples for further classification don't worry, I have used too much of terms over here. If somebody is not unclear about uh, some of these terms, don't worry. We'll be looking at those things in a while. So, for example, the correct results targets are known and uh, are given in input to the model during the learning process. The construction of proper training, validation, and test set is crucial. And these methods are very fast and accurate. So, supervised learning specific methods are very fast and accurate, and uh, it depends upon you know accuracy purely depends upon the amount of data you use as part of the training, folks, and how to be able to generalize, uh, give the good results when new data are given in the input without knowing the priority to the target. So, let's see with an example. Let's try to understand supervised learning with an example, which makes more sense to us. So, guys. So this is a high level flow of a supervised learning model. So before we actually discuss about this entire flow, let me show you one slide over here quickly. Say, for instance, if you have created, um, I mean, if you want to train the mission in such a way, okay, let's take a simple example over here. For instance, if you are given with corpus of images, one with uh, say elephant images and the other corpus of images with say lion, okay, along with the labeled data. When I say labeled data, each data set along with its target value. For instance, if I consider this one of the images over here, what is the target value for this which is other none other than elephant and if I consider one of this image over here, the target value is actually lion over here. So since all these all these images comes along with these labels, that's why I'm calling this data set as the labeled data set. And I use this labeled data set as part of the training process so that the training algorithm will actually leverage on this data set and will build some model and that model will be further used to classify the unseen examples with without the label data, without the target variable folks. So guys, if I take, let me just quickly take a notepad over here. Okay. Guys, can you please tell me what sort of features will help to actually identify a specific uh, specific uh, image as the elephant or specific image as the lion. Can you please tell me what sort of uh, features? Otherwise, instead of images, let's call it as, you know, if what, what sort of features will actually help you to s identify a specific object to be a, an elephant or say lion. About the chart window, guys. Okay, so Apurva has some answer over here. So Apurva says it's shape, okay, size, okay, color, and then height. Excellent. 
then say okay year size year size and uh, can I use trunk trunk also one of the features right so okay so maybe okay so let's list it ourselves to only the, these things I think there are some other uh, tasks okay so John says it's tasks body size okay so let's test tasks also okay so guys if you consider these are the different features and uh, we can actually call this feature set I mean this entire feature set will be used while training the example and since these feature set actually signify the final will actually impact the final target variable these variables can be treated as predictor variables because these variables help us to determine the final target variable so that's why we are actually calling all these features as predictor variables and the final var variable we are we can also call it as the label as well and here the final variable is either elephant or lion so these are the final outcomes right so this is the label so let's now just take uh, you know sample records over here so for size shape okay instead of shape let's take size itself so What else? Shape also, I think. Uh, okay, so don't worry. So size, if the size of uh, a record, say for example, if I have a, a specific training example. So I'll just call it as, you know, example one or whatever. So size is, say, somewhere around 400. Color is, say, some, some color over here. So let's call it as black and say height as some 700 year size as some around 200 say trunk as say s yes, and say tusks as s yes. and let's take another example okay so another example say with somewhere around 500 and say some okay not 500 probably let's call it as 100 and say brown or whatever white brown any any other color and let's have some height as say again 150 or whatever and say 150 again so again no no okay so this has a label as for instance elephant and this has a label of say lion so now that we understood what is a predictor variable and the target variable so let's try to understand other terminology also here so these records which has both the predictor variables and the target variable I'll actually treat these records as the training examples training data so this entire corpus I can treat it as the training set and each one of this I can call it as training example over here Okay, so considering such a situation, so if uh, supervised learning is a way through which you train along with the labels. So since we already have the labels here, I'm just calling this as the supervised learning. And you ask the algorithm to extract certain features out of it. And based on that, next time when you see, when you pass an unseen variable or unseen example, then the algorithm will be able to classify it into the right class, guys. So that's whole flow has been represented in this uh, slide over here. For instance, if you are given with the training text, which has which is the documents or images, etc. So if if your training set contains say images, for instance, then uh, you actually use this training data set along with the. So first you extract the feature vector out of your training set. So that's the first step. So since this is the raw data, you cannot straight away use this raw data as part of uh, training the algorithm. The, the first step would be you know, to extract the features, so which we have already done over here. 
and after extracting the right feature set, so which is, is this, extracting all these features, then you pass all these features, I mean these feature vectors to the machine learning algorithm. So once you pass all these features set to the learning algorithm, then the learning algorithm will actually generate a model. Model also can be treated as a simple program as well. Model is nothing but a program guys, but in, in machine learning we actually call that program as the model. So then this since since tri this is a training data set and since it's a supervised learning, the training data set also has the labels over here while actually training the machine learning algorithm. Okay, then after generating the model by training the training it with both training data and the labels, here we use the model to actually further classify the unseen data sets like the unseen image we actually pass and we extract the feature vector and we pass the feature vector to the model, then let the model decide which label, which class this specific uh, vector will belong to. So it will actually simulate the expected label over here. So this is how you know supervised uh, learning model works. Even if you don't uh, get some of bits and pieces over here, don't worry because we'll be having dedicated sessions for classification, then that's where we actually understood in detail about supervised learning folks. And all these terminologies, we'll be continuously using this. So we'll get, uh, once we get to that level. Okay, so unsupervised learning, so it's, it's pretty much uh, opposite, quite opposite to that. And uh, it says, you know, unsupervised learning is nothing but training the algorithm without the labels can be treated as the unsupervised learning as a simple definition, but let me give a relevant example for that. For instance, if you look at human beings, folks, human beings are actually pattern-seeking beasts. I would say humans are actually pattern-seeking beasts. Why? Because we human beings will actually try to identify anything based upon certain patterns. Let's take a quick example over here. Let's take, you know, uh, uh, just a two or three year old baby and if you take the three year old baby to say some parking lot okay and since considering you know the three year baby might not know the vehicle names and if you allow that baby to actually look at different vehicles located in the par parking lot for example bikes okay then uh, say cars and then say trucks, okay, and then say some uh, mini buses. So if, if these are the different types of vehicles which are already available in the parking lot and if you ask the baby to look at all those different objects which are placed over the parking lot, then what the baby does is based upon the patterns, the baby might actually differentiate different objects available in that, different vehicles in that, different vehicles available in that parking lot based on the pattern among us, those vehicles guys. So that baby might be able to classify or that baby might be able to categorize certain objects to bikes, certain objects to trucks, certain objects to cars, though that baby might not actually know the labels though she might not know okay, whether this is a bike or whether this is a bus or whether this is a truck, but still the baby is able to actually cluster those objects, I mean group those objects into different categories, say X category, Y category and Z category. So that's happening is, that's, that's purely happening because of the, <coughs> sorry, that's, that's happening because purely because of the patterns mean you, be, patterns being the same for different objects within a different, within a unique group guys. And uh, for a little more definition says that the model is not provided with the correct results during the training. So here in unsupervised learning, we actually will not have the labels for each training set, rather that's why we are saying that the model will not be provided with the correct results. Results here stands for the target variables, which is labels during the training phase. So then can we, can we use to cluster the input data into classes on the basis of their statistical properties only, cluster significance and labeling. So this can be used for doing the grouping or categorizing the 
objects guys and then the, the labeling can be carried out even if the labels are only available for a small number of objects representative for the desired classes works. so here you know <coughs> unsupervised learning flow is available before we actually talk about this flow let's go back let's go still further so and another example here which which is you know if you take again if you just take a small baby again to a some some fruit stall okay then if you ask to classify the objects i mean to classify the fruits into different groups then by looking at the patterns within the fruits the baby might be able to classify the i mean group the objects into different categories over here so though we do not have the actual labels still we are able to actually group based, based upon the patterns within these fruits guys this kind of learning can be treated as the unsupervised learning where you actually train the system without the labels and let the system decide on behalf of you how many groups are actually existing within your input data sets and uh, just categorize all those objects into different different groups based on the similarities of these objects so if I come back uh, you guys can see you guys can notice you know uh, this um, flow over here so in this flow an unsupervised learning uh, model you actually not passing the label data over here you are just passing the raw data set and uh, we'll actually extract the feature vector out of it and we'll pass this feature vector to the machine learning algorithm However, we are not passing the labels. I mean, however, we are not passing the target variables with, as part of the training data set. And let the mission actually generate some model. And we'll use that model to actually further classify the images into different groups. However, there will be no such uh, this space. So uh, maybe this is a typo over here. So the learning algorithm will be able to generate different groups directly. There will be no model generated. It will directly generate the groups directly, guys. So this is all about you know uh, supervised and unsupervised learning techniques. So yeah. So any questions, folks, up to this? So Apurva, do you have still any questions in either supervised or unsupervised learning? Apurva, and Sudarshan says, what is the difference between group and the label? So group and the label, the difference is you know. Label stands for the direct class uh, here, Sudarshan. But here, when I say group, so this group of objects is nothing but the group. I mean, virtually there is no much difference. See, if you say lion, so lion is not a group, right? Lion is the label here over here. Elephant is a label. I mean, it's a target variable. For example instead of taking this generic example if you look at you know spam example which i have taken previously if you if i ask you to classify a specific email to either spam or ham so here spam and ham actually stands out the label guys and uh, if i say grouping for example if you go back and if, if i say i ask you to actually group different news articles so you actually group multiple news articles based upon the patterns over there so that's that's actually different, right, than the actual label. So do you understand that now? Sudarshan, Mayank says apple and orange can come in one group, but label apple is different and orange are different. Okay, so, yeah, I think Mayank is answering your question, Sudarshan. Apple and orange can come into one group but label apple is different and orange are different okay so that's uh, probably he is he might be in such an assumption that maybe all of them can be fruits or whatever so label could be in, in, in even different okay so surendra says so can we show the mission algorithms say stock data and then tell it to look at 10 patterns in it once trained, I am hoping it can detect same patterns in the new data across 10,000 data. Uh, 